I'm sure you will um, know the source of this. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free, a free open and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. This particular speech is very prophetic. I want to ask you about secrecy and secret societies in the sense of, you know, during the times of 1963 to 68, there was four assassinations, two whom were family members of yours and the other two who were family members of mine. <laughs> Malcolm and Martin. Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Now, as we talk about, you know, the forces that your uncle laid out, who do you think that he was speaking to? Because during the 60s, right, was one of the most powerful and pivotal times as far as leaders working to influence the future of America, right? And it seemed to be, you know, these forces behind the scenes that some people call shadow government, some people call managerial class, right? There's all of these different names for it. But people think about who has the most power. Often people think that it is the president of the United States. So why would he have such a um, veiled speech in a manner, right, about secrecy and secret orders and secret oaths and secret proceedings, right? What was he alluding to? Just so that people know, that speech was my uncle, John F. Kennedy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, I think he was warning us against the world that we now live in, mm. which is uh, one of his primary interests was keeping the country out of war. And he discovered very quickly into his administration that he was surrounded by uh, an intelligence apparatus, military brass, who considered war with the Soviet Union not only to be inevitable, but also to be uh, desirable and as quickly as possible. Because at that point, we had a larger um, arsenal than the Soviet Union. He refused to go to Cuba in 61, and then again in, in 63 during the Cuban Missile Crisis. For, and then he refused in 62 the opportunity to go to war during the Checkpoint Charlie Crisis in Germany. He kept us out of Vietnam. He never sent a combat troop to Vietnam. And a month before he died to the day, he ordered, he signed National Security Order 263, ordering all the troops home from Vietnam. 30 days later, he was murdered. Um, and mm. I think it was, uh, you know, the, he was referring to a group of people who were really robbing us of democracy. Democracy is about transparency mm -hmm. because we own the government. It, it, the government has no business lying to us. And now it lies, not only lies, but hides things every day, you see. I mean, mm. we saw congressional hearings this week in which um, David Morenz, who was the, the deputy to Anthony Fauci, is telling, is, had emails in which he was bragging that he had been coached by the Freedom of Information staff, by the chief Freedom of Information officer at NIH, how to hide his emails, how to destroy them in ways in which he couldn't be caught. So mm. the, the transparency officer at that agency, the person who's in charge of making sure there's no secrets, was actually coaching high-level staffers how to keep secrets. And, you know, of course, if government is allowed to keep secrets, they're not working for us anymore. They're working for somebody else. They're either working in their own interests or they're working for some larger interests. And... um you know, I think that is the danger that our democracy can be subverted. Teddy Roosevelt warned in, in 1903, he said, American democracy will never be destroyed by a foreign enemy. 
we're too powerful. We're, we've got the oceans mm -hmm. between us and any potential enemies where uh, we have a very, very strong military, a huge economy. We simply cannot be conquered. But our democratic institutions and all the values of our country will be subverted by what he called malefactors of great wealth who will steal them from within. Mm. Who killed your uncle, right? Who killed your dad? And are they the same people that assassinated Martin Luther King and Malcolm X? Yeah, and, and um, you know, most people don't know this, but Martin Luther King's family, Dexter and, and Marty and, and the rest of the family, Coretta Scott King, who was with me when my dad died mm. and who then, you know, was on the airplane when we brought my dad's body um, home from L.A. to New York, they sued uh they they did a lawsuit that received almost no publicity. You know, they won. meaning that they sued the government for the assassination of Martin Luther King. Yeah, and won. And they won that suit, a civil suit. The evidence that we have now is so voluminous, included conf included confessions of probably thirty people who were involved in his assassination. A lot of them deathbed confessions, but mm -hmm. um, that clearly shows that there was CIA involvement. Lee Harvey Oswald, the New York Times now admits this, was a CIA asset since I think 1957 or 58. Mm. And the CIA is still involved in covering up the, the final documents that are legally, the government legally is required. Congress passed a law saying that by 2018, all documents related to my uncle's assassination had to be released, and the CIA will not allow that to happen. President Trump ran in 2016 and said he was going to release them all. He got into office, and he changed his mind. Mm -hmm. President Biden made the same promise. He got into office and changed his mind. Why do they change their mind? You know, what are they hiding? If you were elected to be president, would you then release the files of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Robert F. Kennedy, and John F. Kennedy? And would you keep that promise, which the is hard I to say as a politician? The day I going to release all those documents. The day. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a big day. I'm always going to, I'm going to sign an executive order forbidding all federal agents, uh, any federal employee from lying to the public. And I, I the executive order is going to say any federal officer, official who lies to the public in conjunction with his official duty is going to immediately lose his job. I'm going to pass another executive order, day one, um, forbidding the CIA from propagandizing American people.